Hello friends, in this video I want to dive a little bit deeper in the different pillars that are necessary to make a choice about different data formats. Let's get started. The first pillar is going to be the readability of the file. As we mentioned in a previous video, data formats are usually classified in structure, unstructure, semi-structure, but this is very human-centric. If machines are the ones who are going to be consuming the data, this is not a distinction that is very important. For this reason, the readability actually gravitates around the fact of who is going to consume the data. If it's going to be important to show it to humans, or is it going to be exclusively for the consumption of machines? The next pillar is going to be the schema. What is the schema in the first place? Well, it's the definition of the structure of the file. If you have a CSV file, you have certain columns and you have rows. Certain data formats do not have a really well-defined schema. For instance, this can happen in JSON files. Certain formats have a clear definition of how the data is going to be structured within the file. Some lack completely this definition, like in the case of a CSV file. Some schema definitions can be altered, so they can be changed over time, and this might be important depending on your application or depending on your business needs. The next pillar is typed. And typed is really close related to the schema. Type essentially means that the data format that you have supports certain kinds of information, say strings or text or numbers. And if in a certain place is not the data type that you're expecting, then the file format will or will not accept this data or this piece of information in this place. For this reason, there are some data formats that are strongly typed, some are loosely typed, and some have no type at all. A CSV file, for instance, is not typed, but there are certain data formats that actually enforce for the data type based on the schema definition as we saw before. But there are certain data types that referring to the schema definition might enforce a certain kind of type in certain parts of the file. Compression is also a really important aspect. If the data format has a clear schema and also clear data types, then compression can be done much more effective. Compression is important because it helps you to save storage and it, it can also help you to run intensive compute operations. It can help you to save CPU time doing computations. The next pillar is going to be write or reads. Certain data formats are optimized for reads, meaning to have software reading information from the data format, meaning to put information within the data. Some are optimized for writes, meaning to put information within the file. In general, it is possible to make a distinction between analytic systems, who tend to be really read intensive, versus transactable systems, who tend to be more write intensive. For this reason, the data format selection depends strongly if you know that your business requirements include more reads or writes of data. Engines is the next pillar that we want to talk about. And as you can imagine, many data files are very specific to certain engines or were developed together with the engines. So this is something that you have to keep in mind depending on the choice of data format that you want to have. Engines are also very scenario specific, as I mentioned before. You might have a business case that is more analytic driven or grid driven, whereas you can have another scenario that is more transactable or write intensive. And depending on this, you might use different engines. By using different engines, 
you might end up different data formats that are coupled with this engine. The last pillar that we want to discuss is going to be splits. Many of the modern workloads that we run, especially on big data, take place in clusters of machines, meaning in, on several machines at the same time. Not all data formats support the capacity to run analytics in a distributed environment. For this reason, it's important to check what is the ability or how capable are the different data formats and engines to run in effective manner distributed computations. To summarize, the seven pillars for an effective data format selection are readability, is this going to be for machines or humans, the schema, what is going to be the structure of the file, does the file format or the data format enforces a fixed structure of the file and can this be changed over time? Is it typed, which is, could be important for compression and for efficiency? Compression capabilities, which is important to save storage and also to optimize CPU time. Is this data format optimal for writes or for reads? Are these data formats bounded to certain engine or are more optimal for certain engines? And finally, the fact that this data format might be optimized for distributed computing if this is the case and if this is part of your business needs. In the next video, we are going to look at some data formats that are used in big data that have some of the characteristics described here.